Rita Guerra, and I'm living a low life. Today on Living the Low Life, it's the evolution of low riding as we look to the future to see where it all might be going. All these cars, this is the next generation of low riding. You gotta get something straight. If this is the next thing in low riding, it's only gonna get bigger and better. Styles merge, the designs evolve, and the next generation gets into the action, taking low riding to a whole new place. <gasps> Guys, do you see this stuff? and get ready to see what just might be the biggest lowrider you've ever laid eyes on. Basically, the craziest lowrider truck you'll ever see. There isn't, as far as we know, nothing around that even comes close to it. Here at The Low Life, we're deep into the heart of the low-riding culture, counterculture, and everything else in between. Whether it's bombs, impalas, or sleek Monte Carlos, Vita and her team will be there on the scene, covering it all for the sake of the lifestyle. Today we want to ask, this and week I'm living the low life, I'm going here. back today. I'm I love the bombs. Oh, you have an impala. Low-riders oh, are the best thing in four wheels. But on this episode, we're exploring the rides that some consider to be next in the evolution of low and slow. Hi, I'm Vita Guerra, and today on Living the Low Life, we're gonna answer the question once and for all, is it low or no? These cars are crazy. In 64, there was Impalas. Before that, there was Bombs. In 75, there was a Caprice Classic. But in 89, there was a Sentra. There wasn't really a Chevy car that you could make a lowrider. The old school cars, they were always low. That was the first thing they did to it. Every year, a new car comes out, so a new car's gonna get lowered. A new car's gonna get customized. I think it will never stop. <sighs> Guys, do you see this stuff? These are cars, trucks, and SUVs found everywhere, from LA to New York, and even in Japan. They lower them, they hit them with candy paint. They put in lowrider interiors. Basically, they're treated like lowriders. But all this begs the question, what is the definition of a lowrider? Everybody thinks it's just hydraulics and stuff like that, but it's not. Basically, a lowrider is, as long as the car, the body is low, that's how, to me, it's a lowrider. People got them, Euros were in, they put spokes on them. There was some with white walls on Honda Civics, etc. I consider it to be a lowrider. We gotta get something straight. It, this is the next thing in lowriding. Mm -hmm. So this is where it's going and it's only gonna get bigger and better. They've got bigger wheels, different makes and models, but the styling comes from the same place. So the question remains, are they lowriders? So this would be like the evolution of low riding, right? Um, yeah, I guess you can say that. You can say that uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a drastic change from where low rider, low rider uh, started. Uh, we're still keeping some of the same basic stuff like in the candy paints, mm -hmm. the details, the murals, and uh, we're still keeping that alive. Whether it's a low rider or not, one thing is certain, there is an influence, and this next ride is a prime example. What kind of car is this? Because it looks nothing like what the car is. It's a Mazda 3. It's a 2004. Everything from the exterior to the interior is all fiberglass. I got the big wheels on it. And what about those doors? I got the idea from looking at cars. Uh, some certain trucks started doing butterfly doors, and I thought, hey, how about I do the opposite? And those are batteries? Those have? are two gel batteries, yes. For? Uh, those are for the system and for the air compressors. It's just uh, this car sucks up so much juice, I need extra batteries back there just to power everything up. You know, rims, tires, suspension, uh, you know, normally paint, uh, body kits, you know, not to mention the stereo and, you know, the base. Uh, these guys are dumping, you know, ungodly amounts of money into their cars nowadays. I've probably put in, like, uh, about 70000 already in it. 
A lowrider would be an old school, I would call this a new school. We have a lot more cars to look at, and when we come back, it's going to be rides, more trucks, and more Vita Guerra. Plus, an epic lowrider that's 100% off the hook. We're in the process of building probably one of the craziest lowriders around, a big rig lowrider that'll lay frame. Today, we're looking at the next evolution in the world of low riding, and that journey includes one very big machine. Basically, the craziest low rider truck you'll ever see. There isn't, as far as we know, nothing around that even comes close to it. More on that later. For now, let's check out a club that knows what cool cars are all about. The club is called Swift, and these guys take their rides to a whole new level. Yeah, I believe this is the evolution of low riding. All these cars, this is the next generation of low riding. So I'm here with Juan. Juan, tell me a little bit about Swift Car Club. Well, our club is basically based in LA. We're basically about 98 members active right now. Mm -hmm. I knew I wanted to be part of a club, mm -hmm. and I only wanted to roll with the best, so I joined Swift. We're out there to swipe out all the competition that we have. How do you get 28-inch rims on, what kind of car is this? It's a Chevy Tahoe. <gasps> well, I took a little bit of modifications uh, to the bodywork and the suspension. And how has this Tahoe been influenced by lowriders? Some of the pinstriping and silver relief, as you see here. And murals, of course. Also, of course, being low to the ground. And wait till you see the interior. So there's all types of animal skins I'm looking at. How many do you have in here? Got seven different types, four full alligators on each door. Is this really like a real alligator? Real alligator, real head. Real teeth? teeth. Yeah, real, everything's real. Blue ostrich, stingray, gator, python. I have four bullfrogs on the handle right there. That's blue lizard right there on the airbag. Great interiors are tough to build. Vita's checking in with a guy who makes the impossible look easy. So what do you do here? Mostly automotive interiors. Oh, I wanted to change the interior of my car into black leather. That's easier to do. Place to come to. <laughs> so, did you do the interior on one's car? Yeah, I did the interior on purple cush. Wow. So, I heard you're going to teach me a little bit of the sewing technique. Yeah, yeah I actually have a small piece right here that I cut out for you. Turn it on. The ghetto light. Yeah. Whoa, it's really bad. How was that? Not bad. Uh, not bad. Uh, uh, this is the work good. <laughs> See, now I learned how to sew. Now I can work on my 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 little writer, right? But first, she has to deal with getting the show done with a lot of sound issues from above. Heads up. There's noise. You know, every time I'm trying to shoot, got the damn planes, because we're always shooting by the freaking airports. Well, while Vita has her own problems, a member of Swift has trouble of his own. He's getting a ticket. Officers, can you please not give him a ticket? So why'd you get pulled over? Um, uh, loud music. Loud music? You were pumping the music too loud? <laughs> I bought the car from an old lady uh, not too long ago, and I paid fifteen hundred, and uh, I paid eight grand for the rims. So usually that's why it's considered a scraper, but the body style is considered a box, and you just throw beat in it, and it's all stock. We have a lot more to look at in the evolution of the ever-changing lowrider. We've been looking at some radical rides, cars some consider to be next in the evolution of the ever-growing lowrider scene. Let's get low, 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 right? Let's look at trucks, a staple in some lowrider communities. Trucks offer more options when the goal is going as low as you can go. They have trucks, they have SUVs, and they have a name that says it all. Let's go hang out with the boys from Toys R Us Truck Club. This is our truck club, Toys R Us. Show Custom Truck Club. We've been around for about 24 years. 
You know, we cruise them on the ground, we cruise them in the sky. So that's our, that's our, how we do it. Done deal. <laughs> they were basically a knockoff of the lowrider cars, which is what was big back then. They started fixing them up their own way and veered away from the lowrider car concept and started adding hydraulic beds. Our club is probably, if not the first, one of the first to come out with the hydraulic beds. And from there, the sky was the limit. Toys R Us is always customizing their trucks. The interior, the paint, the suspension. This crew really has a knack for cool. You have lowrider trucks. You have, I guess, your bling bling type of trucks. This truck is more, I guess you would say, your, your bling bling with the Lambo doors and wild paint job. Whereas we got another one over here that's more of the lowrider truck that's on hydros versus airbags. It can hop, it can three wheel. Oh, hey, how you doing? This is a, a forerunner that uh, shouldn't re really be sitting on three wheels. Here it is. Front slams all the way to the floor with a titanium plate to get that custom, nice, bright sparking. Well, you probably can't get any lower than that. It's a 1997 full-size truck. It's got a 2001 Denali front end on it, and it's back, the lace frame, all the way down to the ground. It's got a 20-inch rim, uh, fulls, nitrous, sound system, all, oh, everything works. It's, it's perfect. Well, it's, a, it's a 95 Chevy S10. It's been uh, fully shaved, suicide doors, candy paint job, the bed's been redone, lace frame. For some guys, it's all about less passengers, more cargo space, and a much larger machine. In short, for a lot of drivers, it's a truck or nothing at all. I love trucks and just a great hobby. Love trucks. Well, I'm not into cars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can do more stuff to them. I mean, you really can't do a whole lot with a car like the hydraulic beds, you know? That might be true, but wait till you see this. From trucks to donks, as some will be asking themselves, what's a donk? Well, let's ask Vita. What's a donk even mean? A donk? A donk is a, is a lifted, uh, car. lifted car. It's lifted up high, like a uh, suspension about seven inch lift, considered a donk. Big wheels on small cars, and as we've discovered, controversy as well. Ask around in the automotive world, you'll get an earful on the topic of donks. Old school lowriders have a lot to say about these less traditional rides. Donks, I hate them. Donks belongs with the monster trucks and off-roading stuff. The first time I saw that, I was like, do they really do that? And, but, I mean, they're serious about it. I mean, they actually put 30-inch rims on a Caprice. Probably about a year ago, I saw it and laughed. <laughs> I think everybody laughs. Yeah. You shouldn't even be driving it, you know? It's not even functional. I mean, like, they'd be smarter to put that car on a truck frame, you know? I mean, it's just ridiculous. Well, to each his own. That's the great thing about the car world. Without a doubt, there's something for everyone. Welcome back as we return to the Swift Car Club, an organization that knows one very important fact. It's all in the details. The paint and styling seems to resemble lowriders, but what's up with the wheels? It's an 85 Oldsmobile. I bought this car actually off a friend. He got it from an old lady, and he tried to fix it, and he ended up messing it up. So I bought it from him, and I fixed it. 24, pinstriping, the leaf, Mural, door jams. This picture is Vita. I'm a fan of hers. <laughs> well, let's go see what Vita thinks of her. Vita, meet Vita. I got it off for her <gasps> calendar or her magazine. Now that is cool. It's so cool, she wants to sign it. Meanwhile, Rick's busy painting on the deck lid. Let's go see what's what. So what do you have going on back here? You know, something, some kind of fantasy stuff, just a little something. Can I paint? Can yes. you teach me? Yes, definitely. Yeah? You think you're going to pick it up? Yes. Give me a chair. Once I get my hands on it, it's no turning back. Just slightly go back, and that's, you see where the paint comes out? Yeah. Don't stand in one position. 
You're a natural. You do have all this stuff. So far, so good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put a candy over it. Um, so it could have like a nice gradient. Together, they make a good team. Rick now adds the details. A reflection here, a shadow there, and presto, one very cool name tag. Ta-da! Yay! So, what do you think? Excellent. Yeah. Everyone back there? Professional. Yeah. Would you let me paint your cars? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Rick, for teaching me how to work with the airbrush gun. And yeah. thank you for letting me use your car as a campus. There's only one thing left for Vita to do. So I'm going for a little ride in this purple kush. Be gentle. Always in. Soon, Vita finds herself in this purple creation, cruising in what has become a rolling tribute to Vita Guerra. See? Anyone can live their little life. Okay, we've been talking about it. Now it's time to give it one very big look. Some will say that this big rig is a giant step in the evolution of low riding. Well, here it is. This is on the rocks. The hood is actually seven different hoods put together. Different wreck trucks that I bought and built and made save parts that were still good. We took the motor out of a waste management garbage truck. Made all of our air intake piping and all of our water piping out of uh, stainless scrap metal from a food cannery. As far as I know, this is the only lowrider big rig around. Basically, the craziest lowrider truck you'll ever see. There isn't, as far as we know, nothing around that even comes close to it. It's insane. Totally hand done suspension, you know, slams to the ground. You know, you can drag lake sparks, you know, 30 feet long. We could do pretty much whatever we wanted with it, and that's, a, you know, the lowrider style is what we opted to go with. As we, as we were building, you know, we're, we're big fans of low. You know, I've, I've got cousins that are into lowriders and hydraulics and hopping and, and stuff like that. What we love about cars and trucks is basically just making things look, things look cool, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter what it is, if it's a golf cart, if it's a, a race car, you know, a pickup truck, a four-wheel drive, it doesn't matter. Whatever it does, we always kind of want to tweak with it, you know, make it look cool. And here is my little in memory sticker of my father. My dad uh, always ran the truck number 747 in remembrance of my father, which this truck was supposed to be his. There's my one little piece of my dad attached to my toy. These two brothers made this rig for their father. Not long ago, he passed on, but it's hard to think of a more heartfelt tribute than this. The truck is, is, is totally Totally an homage to my father. I mean, everything that's, that's done there and everything that, you know, that we do, that's all a tribute to my father teaching us. Dad, this all happened because of you. You made us who we are. I miss you and I'll never forget you. As time moves on, the evolution continues. In the world of low riding, change will always be mixing it up with tradition. Everybody tries to one-up the, the, the last builder. Our club is always gone. It's going to be probably an outcast club all the time. We're the new generation of low riding. Guys, do you see this stuff? Creating new ideas here in the low life. Till next time, see you later, baby. When I was little, I used to talk to these little plants. They were like really informative. You just gotta open your mind to the possibility that that can be possible. It's weird, forget it. You'll only understand if you're in my head. Yeah, but is it a low rider? Living the low life.